Would you just let me preach my heart today? Come with a deep burden this morning. And I ask you to let me preach. Just open your heart. Let me preach. I, <laughs> Toby said this morning, you got any notes? I said, no. I don't have no more notes. I've been preaching without notes. I don't need notes today. I got a heart full of notes. Amen. So I'm going to just preach to you my heart a little bit today. Until the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. This is what the Lord said. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and hast found them liars and hast borne and hast patience and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. The Lord said, I know all this about you. I know what good you've done. I know all this stuff. I know you've labored, you've worked, you've had patience, and you've not put up with evil, and you've sorted out who was apostles and who wasn't and who's liars. But he said, nevertheless, nevertheless. He said, I have somewhat against thee. Because thou hast left thy first love. The Lord said to Ephesus, Remember, I want you to remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. And I want to I want to just preach to you from my heart just a little while about the love of God. You may be seated. To the church, Jesus was talking. Some of the great writings of Revelation are found in the first two or three chapters where the Lord wrote letters to the seven churches of Asia. And here he's writing to a church that had done so many things good. They worked, they labored, they had patience. They didn't put up with evil. They, 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 dis, they went through those who said they were apostles and found some to be liars. And, and the Lord said, I'm, I, I see all of that. And, and you've not fainted. You didn't quit. But he said, I, I want you to know I got a problem. I got, I got something against you. And today I, I just I want to open my heart for the next little while and talk about the love of God. Because the Lord said, He said, that's something that I have against you is that you have left. You didn't lose it, you left your first love. Often we say you've lost your first love. No, they didn't lose it, they left it. And there is a difference in leaving something and losing something. Amen? So if, if I may for a little while today, this may seem more like a Wednesday night Bible study, but I ask you to open your heart for the next little while because what I am about to tell you are some of the cardinal doctrinal truths of the Bible. And they are foundational things that if we don't get this, Nothing else matters. If we don't understand what I'm about to talk to you about today, nothing else matters. So I'm going to give you a lot of scripture today, and I'm going to talk to you from the heart for just a few minutes. I guess the first thing we need to do is understand what Jesus said about love. Because in Mark 12 and verse 28, the scribes came to him, and having heard them reasoning together and perceiving that he had answered them well, they asked him, which is the first commandment of all? 
And Jesus answered him, the first of all commandments. Everybody say the first of all commandments. Here's the first of all commandments according to Jesus Christ. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord, thy God, with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. He said, this is the first commandment. So the first thing God says that a man must do if he's going to be right with God is he's got to fall in love with Jesus. He's got to fall in love with his maker, and he's got to love him above everything else. And then he continued in verse 31, and he said, The second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. One writer in his recording said this, Upon these commandments hang all of the law and prophets. You can be a tongue talker. You can have singing ability. You can be a worker in the church. You can be a musician. You can be a preacher. You can be a board member. You can be a Sunday school teacher. You can be a ministry leader. But if you are not fulfilling the first two commandments, it is all null and void, and you fall to where Ephesus was, where the Lord said, you've done some good stuff. But I got a problem. Because you don't love me like you used to love me. So Jesus, I suppose, is the greatest example of love that we have. As a matter of fact, one scripture just simply said it this way. God is love. That's very simple. God is love. But in, in John chapter 3, the Bible said, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This is the greatest love that I have ever known. Romans said it this way, Paul said, but God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While I was deep in sin, while I was without God, when I was not really anything to God, when I didn't matter anymore, God died. He sent his son that died upon a cross for you, my friend, and for me. That, if you want to know what that is, John 15 and 12 says it, better than anything I know, the 12th and the 13th verse. Because Jesus was talking, he said, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. For this is what he said, greater love. Hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. This is exactly what Jesus Christ did for you and I. The greatest example of love is the cross. The greatest example that I could ever imagine is being beaten with a cat of nine tails, with having a crown of thorns in your head, with having a sword riven through your side, with having blood spurting from your hands and your feet while you hang up on a cross not because you have done any wrong, not because you have sinned, but he took the sins of the whole world, walked up Golgotha's hill, laid down his life on a cross, and here we are today because he loved us. What the Bible said in John, 1 John 4, verse 19, and you'll agree with this scripture, we love him because, everybody say because, he first loved us. That's why we love him today. When we sing, oh, how I love Jesus. 
when we sing falling in love with Jesus, when we sing about the love of God, the love of God is more to me than all this world could ever be. Some of that's, that's, that's past some of your time. But we used to sing that in the congregation, the love of God. You know why we sing about it? You know why we preach about it? You know why we, we gloat in it? Because he loved us first. We're here because he loved us when we were unlovable. We were here. We're here because he took our sins and he walked and nailed him to the cross. We're here only because of the love of God. He put me up out of the miry clay. He set my feet feet on a rock. He brought me out of darkness into marvelous light. He loved me. He loved me when nobody else would love me. He loved me because he's God and he showed us how to love. The greatest example of love is the love of God. Can you say amen? Are you glad that he loved you? Are you glad you know the love of God? Let me finish reading though because here's the crux of the matter. We say we love God. I preached many years ago from this sermon topic. Don't tell God you love him. Show him. Don't tell God you love him. God said one time about Israel, he said, they are near me with their mouth, but they are far from me with their heart. They're saying it right. It sounds good but they are not loving me the way they are talking. They're not showing it in their action. They're not showing, let me tell you something. We have to fall in love with Jesus Christ again. And to fall in love with him is what Ephesus had to do. Here's what the Lord said to them. He said, I have something against you because you left. You walked off. You put it behind you. You left your first love. But he said this, I want you to remember where you were. I want you to remember where you fell from and I want you to repent and I want you to do your first works and I will come quickly to thee or else I will come quickly to thee and I'll remove your candlestick unless you repent. He said if you can't fall in love with me you can't be in my church. If you can't repent that you've left the love of God you can't be right and I'm preaching on this Sunday morning where is your love for God? How much do you love God? And do we really love God? I've just come to empty my soul today because I hear a lot of mouth religion, but I don't see a lot of heart religion. It may get a little quiet today, but it's been quiet before, and I can preach with or without an amen. It ain't going to bother me because I'm going to preach what God wants me to preach. So, verse 20, 1 John 4. If a man, if a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, or, or for he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? Well, tell me how holy you are if you can't love your brother. Don't tell me how godly you are if you can't love people around you. Well, I'm going to get there today. You better hang with me. Because you see, here's where we are. We think we can just do what we want to do and say, oh, I love you, Jesus. But it don't happen like that. When Jesus taught, and I'm going to preach this not long down the road as soon as I feel it's time. But you know what he said in the Lord's Prayer? Father, forgive us as we forgive our debtors. You can't love God and you can't get forgiveness until you love your brother and you forgive your brother. There's got to be the love of God in you, not just for those around you. He said you got to love your neighbor like you love yourself. Don't tell me you don't love yourself. How many of you looked at a mirror this morning? I want you to be honest with me right now. You looked at a mirror before you left the house. Hold your hand up. Don't you lie to me. You looked at a mirror. Every hand in this building ought to go up because every one of you did it. 
You know why you looked in the mirror? You won't be sure that hair was in place. You ought to be sure everything was just right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Some of you have full-length mirrors. You want to be sure everything looks good from top to bottom because you love me. Not me, but you love me. You understand that. Because the Bible said no man ever hateth himself. And a man that says he does hate himself is a liar. You are not telling the truth if you say you don't love yourself. And the Bible said to treat your neighbor as yourself. Whatsoever ye would have men do unto you. I'm preaching on Sunday morning. Whatsoever you would have men do unto you, do ye likewise unto them. It's called the golden rule. But you see, we got to get past just loving those that love us. We got to get past just loving somebody because they give us a compliment. We got to get past just loving somebody because they fit our criteria as a Christian. You got to love folks that don't dress like you. You got to love folks that don't talk like you. You got to love folks that don't act like you. You got to love folks that don't come to your church. You got to love people everywhere, all the time, every time, or you're not in the will of God. Somebody told me not long ago they were having trouble at work. I told them what Sister Mangan said many years ago about preachers and church trouble and people giving preachers trouble. She said, you know what I do? I just love the devil out of them. You know what my daddy always told me? This, this is a good, this man, this is, this is good stuff right here. This is a GE-ism right here. In case y'all don't know what that is, my daddy was GE Chance, and I call him GE-isms. He had some stuff. But he told me one time, he said, son, if you are around a bad horse, the best thing you can do is get right up next to him. Y'all get it? He was telling me that about pastoring. He said, you get a bad horse, you just get up. He can't kick you if you ride up on him. You get away from him a little bit, he can kick you from here to yonder. But you got to love everybody. You got to, you see, I, I just went through scripture after scripture after scripture this morning. And I thought about Ephesus. And Ephesus, you were doing so good. But why did you leave your first love? Because here's the, here's the, the problem. When you leave the love of God, you leave the love of people. That's why God said, first of all, you got to love me. And if you can love me, then you can love your neighbor. And if you can't love me, you don't love your neighbor either. Don't tell me you love your neighbor and don't love me because there's a progress thing here. you got to love me and then you love your neighbor. How can you tell me you love me and, and you think you love your neighbor? you got to love me before you can love your neighbor. But this we know. That we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. 1 John 5, 2. This we know. We love or we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. What commandments? Love the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. For this is the love of God. John said, this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. Then Jesus came along in the, in the Sermon on the Mount. My goodness, did he, did he tag it? When, when he said in verse 43 of chapter 5, Matthew, he said, you've heard it said that, that it hath been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. But he said, I want to say something to you. Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good. And sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For 
If ye love them which love you, what reward have you? Do not even publicans the same. You ain't done squat if you just love people that love you. That's not good pulpit vocabulary, but that it works. You got to love people that don't love you. You got to love people that love you, but you got to love people that don't love you. See, here's, here's, here's where we are. And, and then when you fall in love with Jesus, you just love because God is love. You know what the Bible said? His love is shed abroad in our hearts by what? Holy Ghost. When you get the Holy Ghost, that's God living inside of you. And when God comes inside of you, you start loving like God. You start seeing like God. You start feeling the things that God feels. You not you're not God, but you have God inside you. And he's dictating to your tongue, and he's dictating to your eyes, and he's dictating where you go and how you live and what you do and what you say. Why? Because the love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost. You want to get out of your mess, Ephesus, fall on your knees and repent and go back to loving God like you know you ought to love God and love him with all your heart. Love him with everything that's in you. But when you're through with that, love your neighbor as yourself. In the New International Version, 1 Corinthians 13. You all know that scripture. Why don't we have put it up? Put it up in the new NIV if you can. I want you to read it with me. Because Paul looked at the church and he said, if I speak in the tongues of men and angels, but do not have love, he said, I'm only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. Let's read on. He said, if I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but I don't have love, he said, I am nothing. How powerful is that? I have faith that can move mountains and I can prophesy and I can do all these spiritual things. But he said, if I don't have love, I don't have anything. I'm nothing. Read on. If I give all my pos- that I possess to the poor and give my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Nothing. It's the bottom line of our Christian walk with God. And then he goes into this. Watch. Love is Everybody say love is. I want you to see what love is because here's the, here's the bottom line of what we ought to be. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not mean, honey. Love is kind. Love is not unkind. Love is kind. Love is not impatient. Love is patient. It's patient and long suffering with men and women around you that don't do the right thing. You got to love them anyway. You got to love them back to Christ. You got to love them back to the altar. You got to love them back to the blood of Calvary. Hallelujah. Love, love is patient and love is kind. And besides that, it don't envy and it don't boast. And love is not proud. That's not what love is. You see people boasting and they're envious and they're proud, they need a baptism of the love of God because the love of God is not that. The love of God is kind and loving and patient. Read on. Love, it it said, it doth it doth not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrong. I don't know if you really get the the punch of what I'm saying here today. I don't know if it's getting to you like it got to me in a 4.30, 5 o'clock prayer meeting this morning. I don't know if you see what God is saying today, but I'm telling you, he's saying this. You don't dishonor others. You don't self-seek. You don't get anger easily. You don't keep no record of what people's doing wrong because that's not what love does. 
Read on, read on. Love does not delight in evil, but it rejoices with truth. Read on. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always preserves. Are you listening today? Read on. Hallelujah. Love never fails. Somebody shout it with me right now. Love never fails. Come on, say it out loud. Love never fails. I want you to say it again. Love never fails. I want to tell you where there be prophecies, they'll fail. Where there be tongues, they shall see. All these things may be done away with, but love is going to stand the test of time. Love is what's going to get us out of here. Love is what's going to be the root and the offspring of this church. Love is going to bring God into this house. Love, 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 love. It never fails. It never fails. And by this shall all men know, Jesus said, that you are my disciples if you have love one for. You notice he didn't say, he didn't say if you have love for God. He didn't say that because your love for God is predicated upon your love for man. say by this shall all men know you're my disciples if you come to church every Sunday and pay your tithes and lift your hands and you look like a Christian smell like a Christian walk like a Christian act like he said it's not what he said he said by this shall all men know that you're my disciples if he sees you loving each other if he sees you wrapping your arms around each other because that's what the church is and that's what God is. That's why he commendeth his love toward us. That while we were yet sinners, he died for us. That's why he so loved the world that he gave his only son that we could find peace and safety in the ark of God. I'm preaching to somebody this morning. You need to be baptized. You need to fall in love with him all over again. You need to make sure your love is in the right place. You need to be sure you're loving the way the Bible said love because Jesus came back, the word of God, in his writings in 1 John chapter 2 and verse 10, verse 15, the Bible said love not the world. Don't love the things that are in the world because if any man love the world, the love of the Father's not in him. You can't just love whatever. You gotta love God and you gotta love people. I love them, but I don't like them. How in the name of God can you love somebody not like them? I want you to explain that. That I've heard that. That's hogwash. I'm just being honest. That's bull. And I won't finish it. How can you say you love somebody? And you say, I don't like them. You know what you need is an altar. You need to fall in love with Jesus. I've been praying. I've been talking to God about this. This is not just something that I came because I needed a sermon today. I've been talking to the Lord about me. I've been talking about to the Lord about you because you see when we fall in love with one another we can take the devil's kingdom right out of his hands. We can we can fearlessly walk by faith and say we're doing what God asked us and wanted us to do and we're loving and we're being kind and we're being we're being what we ought to be according to 1 Corinthians 13. That's called the love chapter of the Bible. I've read it over and over and over but it hit me so forcibly this morning though I speak with the tongues of men and angels and I have not love. It doesn't matter if I give to the poor and I have not love. It doesn't matter what a good righteous guy I am and I have not love. I'm here to tell you I'm just a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. But if I can love like he loved, if I can fall in love with Jesus and fall in love with people, We were going to a certain place, my wife and I, a few days ago. And I said, is she going to be there? Some people just rub you the wrong way. You ain't got no problems like that, do you? Nah, I know that. 
There's people that get under your skin. You're not human if that don't happen. But you can't hate them. You got to love them anyway. I've been around people. I've been around preachers. I, 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 I post on Facebook. We had 20 get the Holy Ghost, and somebody come back and pray. We had 22. I've been around people, no matter what you do, they do it better. Amen? I caught 15 fish, so what? I caught 20. I killed a big buck. Well, I killed one bigger than that. You know, it's just no matter what you do. But love don't boast. Love don't envy. Come on now. I'm not telling you that there won't be people that get under your skin. But that's the kind of folks that drive you to your knees. I told somebody not long ago, that's your grace developer. That's 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 the person that makes you pray more. Don't look at me like that. Y'all, if I had a show of hands here today, you could think within 10 seconds that somebody just gets on your nerves. Amen. But you got to love people anyway. You got to love them past all their faults. And furthermore, you got to love them when they talk about you. And you got to love them when they mistreat you. And you got to love them when they're not right. And you got to love them when they turn into your enemy. You got to pray for them. You got to love them. I've shook people's hand and looked them in the eye that knew that I knew they was out talking about me. But you know what? I'm going to love you in spite of. I will love you no matter what because I refuse to go to hell over who you are. I refuse to go to hell over what you say. I'm going to make sure this old boy is right with God and I want you to know the love of God has to consume me. It has to consume you. So here's what happens. We can be like Ephesus Church. We can do all good stuff. This church has got great things happening, great people, great wonderful things. But don't, don't ever let us lose and leave the love of God. Don't let us forget where we came from. Don't let us forget that the church is a hospital. It's not a social club. This is not the Kiwanis Club. This is not the Lions Club. This is not the Millionaires Club. This is a hospital. This is where the sick need to come and be healed. This is where people that are hurting and the wounded need to come and have their wounds bound up. This church needs to love on everybody that comes through these doors. And once they get in these doors, they need to keep loving and keep loving and keep loving. We all do. I thank God for what's happening among our men and our women. I thank God for the love of God. I thank God. And why I'm preaching this today is not to one or two. It's for me. It's for you. It's for every one of us. Because we block God from doing what he wants to do unless we fall in love with him and we fall in love with one another. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost today. I felt him so strong speak to my spirit this morning. I said, Lord, I've preached that so many times. He said, preach it again. I'm telling you the truth. I've used these scriptures so many times. He said, say it again. Because I want my people to know that they can become an Ephesus of the 21st century and have everything in place, everything looking good. There's few churches far in between that have what we have. I want to tell you that right now. I'm not bragging. I'm just saying we've been blessed by God. The Lord has blessed this church. Everything you see, God has blessed us with. I, I don't take any glory. I give God all the glory. You'll see me say it often when you come on Facebook and say, great message today, Pastor. Normally, I'll just say, God gets the glory. I don't care about all that. All I know is that I love God with all that's in me, from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. And I can't love him whom I've not seen if I cannot love Tony and Donna and David and Dana and Matt. I can't love God if I can't love you. 
So I want to fall in love with everybody in this room again today. And I want to fall in love with Jesus all over again. Because that's revival. That's revival. That's what God wants to do when he gets us all on the same page. You ever read Acts chapter 2? They were all in one place with one accord. You know what they did? They had one mind. They were all together. Everybody say they were all together. They wasn't divided. They wouldn't, and do we have, no, we don't have that in this church. Honestly, we don't. And why the Lord puts this on me, so maybe it's preventive maintenance that I'm preaching today. But I know this. I know he's been working on me, and I believe he's working on you. The Lord wants us to love like he wants us to love, and that is fall in love with him. I've been reading the last few days, and I, I come to a close. I was reading this week on what God said he would do to Israel if they wandered away from him and disobeyed his voice. Man, it was harsh stuff. It was, it was tough. I thought, God, have mercy. But then he turned around and he started talking about what he would do if they obeyed. How that their crops would be blessed. Their land would be blessed. Their jobs would be blessed. The rain would come on time. Everything that they put their hand on was going to be blessed of God. Simply if they obeyed the things that he gave them through the voice of Moses. Simply obedience. If you obey what I'm telling you to do, no nation is going to stand before you. Nobody's going to overwhelm you. You're going to a land that flows with milk and honey. And I'm going to give it to you. You're going to conquer every enemy. You're going to walk in there and people are not going to understand what a powerful God you have until I show my might. You don't have to do nothing. Just be still. Just know that I'm God. All you have to do is do what I say. Just do what I say. And then he comes along in the New Testament. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, just keep my commandments. I'll take care of you. I still believe he'll heal your sick. He'll bless your job. He'll bless your land. He'll bless everything that you touch because you become favored of God when you fall in love with him and you fall in love with people. Stand all over this house with me today. I'm falling in love with you, Lord. You see, here, here's the deal. You, you, you can't say, you can't say, well, preacher, you, you, you don't understand what they've done. Here's here, I got to measure it up today. You can't go by what anybody's done. Because if I read it right, when they walked by Jesus, they spit in his face. They slapped him. They mocked him. They humiliated him. They hung him with nothing. And I don't know that it was even a loincloth. Some writers say that we're being very modest to put just a loincloth on him. But they hung him to expose him to the world. And when it was all said and done, he just said, Father, Forgive them. They know not what they do. He loved them anyway. And if I'm going to be like Jesus, I cannot take your faults and drive you in the ground with your faults. I cannot take your shortcomings and your missteps and drive you away. I have to love you into the arms of God. Because when you love God, 